If you would, go with me to 1 Samuel. I don't know what this Old Testament thing is about me, but I seem like I want to stay there here recently. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. And we're going to read verses 32 through 37. And then we're going to pick it up again for 48 through 51. We will be reading out of the NRSV today. And when you have it, could you please rest on your feet? It reads like this, verse starting at verse 32. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth, and it turned against me, and I would catch it and by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. Since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, verse 37, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Now we're dropping down to verse 48. When the Philistine drawn near to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag. Somebody say hand in his bag. In his bag. Took a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, striking down the Philistine and killing him. And there was no sword in David's hand. Verse 51, then David read, then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He grasped his sword, drew out of its sheath and killed him. Then he cut off his head with it. I want to speak to you this morning from this thought position in the valley, a position. I'm sorry, position for the victory in the valley, position for the victory in the valley. One more time, position for the victory in the valley. Heavenly Father, most precious God, we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do, God. We give you glory right now, God. We ask you, Lord, that you touch my throat right now, God. That I can give the word of God the way you have given it to me, God. We ask you, Lord, that it fall on good ground, God. That it takes root, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. You may have your seat. Position for victory in the valley. Position for victory in the valley. I, I don't know, but it just seems in my spirit that there are some people going through some valley experiences. But even though you might be in the valley, <clears throat> if you understand that you've been positioned for victory, you understand that you even victorious in the valley. See, everybody want to talk about the mountaintop, but it's in the valley low that you understand who you got and who's on your side. And so when you're in the valley, you can still have victory in the valley because you've been positioned. Because once you've been positioned, God does the positioning. So it doesn't make any difference where you find yourself at. As long as God has done the positioning, you have the victory. We got to get to the point where I've been living off this here lately and it's just been blessing my spirit. And that's how I'm able to maintain uh, 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 a sense of peace in my life no matter what I'm facing because I understand that I've been positioned for a time such as this uh, help me Holy Ghost even you all going to the conference and coming back we're going to tie this in somehow I don't know how but that's what God does but you've been positioned I think that uh, my wife was telling me that they said it's already done well, 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 well if it's already done, you had to be pos positioned in that for you to understand it's already done. Because if you don't understand your position, you won't understand that it's already done. But once you understand your position, you know that it's already done. That's why you don't need to waver in anything God has told you because you understand it's already done. So, 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 as we go into this text, 
I, I, I want to go back to 16 before I can take you to 17. And, and in 16, it, 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 it tells, it tells Samuel that, uh, why are you still mourning? I have rejected Saul. So I need you to go to see the house of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, Bethlehemite. And I need you to pick a child out of the house. And, and, and I don't even know if I'm going to get to the test because there's so much nuggets just in the introduction. Because he told him to go to Jesse's house and pick the next king. But they had to send off for David. If they understood that he was in the house, why did they need to send off for him if he's in the house? I just came by to tell some of y'all that there's you are out in the field, but God is calling you into the house. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't get discouraged by being in the field. I know you think what you're doing is not important, but God said, I got my eye on you and I will pull you out of the field into the house. So now they begin to look at the elder son, uh, Eliab and Abinadab and, and Shammar, and they're looking at him. He says, surely not this one. And he rejected one son and rejected another son and rejected another son. And when it was all said and done, he rejected about seven sons. And then here come that eight. And we told you the number eight means new beginnings. So here come that new beginning around the corner. And he anoints him in front of his brothers. But before I get there, he said, don't look at the outward appearance, but, but, but look at the heart because God judges the heart. Too many times we look at the outward and think we got something, but, 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 but we need to be very careful because there are some people in the church, they look good on the outside, but where is their heart? He said, man, a man look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So he anoints him in front of his brothers. Be careful in this next season when you get anointed in front of your brothers. Because when you get anointed in front of your brothers, everybody's not on your side. Because sometimes when you anointed, and I ain't going to say sometimes, majority of the time when you anointed, people are upset because they got rejected. Don't spend your time waiting on people who've been rejected. If God has anointed you, do what God has called you to do. And the ones that have been rejected, God will deal with them. So now he anoints him in front of his brothers. And then uh, Saul begins to have this evil spirit on him. And then this is where the positioning come in. Because see, you have to understand that, 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 that Saul had an evil spirit. And they say that there's somebody that can play the harp. And not only can he play the harp, but he's a warrior. And, and, and they're speaking of David. So, so, so they pull David in. And when David would play the harp, the evil spirit would go away. But then when David would stop, the evil spirit would come back. But see, you had to understand God was positioning him because after that, he said Saul found favor. And then he made him his armor bearer. See, see, so you got to understand he was positioning him because he had to get him close enough to Saul for what's about to take place in, in the 17th chapter. Because see, Samuel was scared because he was scared of Saul because he said, if I go and anoint the next king, then the king that's still living is going to kill me. He said, don't worry about that. But now he's his armor bearer. So now he's close to Saul. So now when he go out to speak to Saul, Saul don't look at him crazy when he's about to fight the giant because now you are already close in my circle. So now let's go to chapter 17. I'm still in the introduction, by the way. Now, chapter 17 uh, uh, begins with the army of Israel on one side of the mountain and the Philistines on the other side. And there was a valley between them. They call it the Valley of Elah. That's why I said that there's you position for victory in the valley. You had one on one side and you had someone on the other side. And now you have a champion. They call him a champion, which literally means a man between two was sent out to the Philistines camp named Goliath. Now, 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 you have to understand Goliath, when they do research, Goliath is over nine feet tall. And, and, and they say his armor and his weapons weighed about 150 pounds. This was a mammoth man. He, he has uh, some height on him and he, he's, he's huge. And, and his, I believe, and I'm just telling what I think, I believe his equipment outweighed David. So Goliath challenges the army of Israel by asking them to choose a man to fight against him. When they, including Saul, knew that he was the ideal person. See, I have a problem with Saul. 
Because if you go back and do your research, Saul was taller than any other man. So where he's calling you out for these 40 days, both day and night. So he's calling them out 80 times within this period of time. Saul, why you didn't step up? See, it amazes me and I'm going to get down there and we'll dig a little more. But it amazes me when someone else steps up and you don't, you get mad at the person who stepped up, but you had the same opportunity. I just have a problem with people in church who get upset with other people because they stepped up. If you would have stepped up, then nobody would have had to step in your place. But, but uh, 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 uh. I'm still in the introduction. He heard and he saw Goliath and, and all his gear and was dismayed and greatly afraid. When they seen him in all of his hookup. So you have to understand being in the military, you can lose the psychology of a battle is you can lose the battle before you ever go in. And so because he this tall and he got on all this equipment, they were frightened in the psychology because they was already feeling that they was about to lose. I, I, I heard a pastor say that he was talking and, 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 and they was playing a, a sport and they, and they talked to the guy and they was talking to the guy in the locker room and they said, how did you lose to this team when this team is not this good? He said, he told the announcer, we lost the game in the locker room. We lost it before we ever took the field because in our psychology, we had already defeated ourselves. See, it's just as important in being prepared for the battle. You have to also have your mind prepared to understand that when I go into the battle, the victory is mine. That's why I win every battle because I already go in with the victory in mind. See, if you're going in thinking you're going to be defeated, then that's what you get. So now he mocked Israel. Exposing them all, especially Saul as cowards. Now, 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 here go to position again. Now, David was instructed by his father, Jesse, to take food to the camp and see how his brothers were doing and bring back the news. Now, now, see, David wasn't even supposed to be there. He gets sent into the camp just to take care of his brothers, them, them Hayden brothers. But he go to take care of them. In this next season, the people who hated on you are going to have to depend on you for you. To... That's why you have to keep doing what God has called you to do, because they're not smart enough to understand that them hating on you later, they're going to need your help. Ah, I feel it in somebody's spirit. Don't 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 pay evil for evil. Yeah, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, help them out. Give them a helping hand. Uh, uh, they, they need you. They, they didn't know what they was doing. That's why even Jesus, when he was on the cross, said, forgive them for they know not what they do. The very person that's piercing me in my side is the one I'm dying for. If they really only knew. Ah, don't take it personal. So now he's challenging them. And now they're afraid. But David accepts the challenge. Look what he even did. Saul had got to the point where this is why I have a problem with Saul. He offers his daughter. Then he says, if that ain't enough, I I'll give you tax exemption. If that ain't enough, I'll give your family some money. I mean, dude, wouldn't it just been easy to fight him yourself? You done gave just about everything you could. But no, he don't want to fight. But he'll rather have somebody else to do his dirt. So now he has a little boy to come in and you have to understand and we'll dig into where he's a boy. Sometimes you have to send a boy to do a man's job. So David accepts the challenge. Do not be surprised in this next season that you don't go from the field to the front line. Because he was in the field, but when his father sent him, now he's in the front line. Because now he has to deal with Goliath. So now before we get to verse 32, because I'm still in the introduction, we now deal with the aspect of I'm dealing with being sent here to fight or I'm being sent here to feed my brothers. But I hear Goliath talking about God's people. And so because David is anointed, see, when you're anointed, you don't fear anything because when you're anointed, because he's anointed him in front of his brothers. See, see, when you are anointed, you don't worry about things. You don't worry about what people say because they can't say anything against you because you're anointed. Touch not my anointing and do my prophet. See, when you are anointed, you ain't got to go out and, and prove your case. Let them talk about you because you are anointed. 
People talk about people who are anointed. If people are not talking about you, you might want to check yourself because maybe you ain't all what you think. But when you're anointed, people are going to talk about you. And so now he goes out there and his brother now has anger. Eliab, the older brother. Oh, you just come down here to see the battle. What battle? Y'all joker scared. What battle is he watching? And he goes at his brother. Not understanding that your brother has been sent to feed you, but also to protect you. Yeah, little baby bruh. Yeah, little baby bruh. Come now to take care of you and protect you. So now we go into verse 32. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go fight with this Philistine. He's basically saying, let no one's heart fail or don't give up or, or, or stop giving up because they done already kind of somewhat threw in the towel because them, them cats scared. But he said, don't give up hope. David is here. Now, you see, David steps up as a boy, because if you do your research, if you go back to numbers and you do your research, most people, when you go to war, you had to be 20 years or older. So now if David wasn't at war with his brothers, that means he had to be still a teenager. Because he was still at the house with Jesse. So now you having a boy have to step up and do what a man can't do. But look what he tells him in verse 33. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him for you are just a boy. And he has been a warrior from his youth. Now, Saul tells David what he thinks he is able, unable to do. He speaks to his youth and his inexperience. Saul clearly looks at the challenge from man's ability instead of God's ability. He basically made the proper assessment because David is young. And he is inexperienced. But what I like about David is David don't listen to rejects. See, they missed that. They missed that. See, if you follow me, that's why I gave you the introduction. Stop listening to rejects because people have been rejected will always tell you what you can't do. Uh, They're going to always tell you what you're unable to do because they can't do it because they've been rejected. So you need to cut all the noise out and get to the point where you block it out. Some of y'all need to hit your spiritual mute button. And when people start talking against what God is so, you just hit that button and just counsel them on out. I have a spiritual mute button. And I press that joker often. Because what happens is if you don't, if you listen to what people begin to say around you, you'll begin to take what they saying and start applying it to you. But check this out. He said, man, you, 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 you've been rejected. My brother's been rejected. Y'all really don't have nothing to say to me. Because if y'all could have got it done, then y'all would have been. I'm going to give you this right here for free. Don't let someone tell you what you can't do when they don't know what you're capable of. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that one. I'm going to repeat that one. Because I need you somebody to take notes on that one. Uh, Don't let someone tell you what you can't do when they don't know what you're capable of. And so now Saul tells David, you're not able to go against him. Son, you got to understand he'd been fighting even before you was born. But see, the thing that I love about understanding that I already have the victory in God is that regardless of the experience you have or don't have, I'm not coming in based on what you think. I'm coming in the name of. That's why you have to get to the point where quit minimizing yourself based on what you know instead of based on who you know. Because who I know is better than what I know because what I know got limits, but who I know has no limits. That's one of those pops. I guess our amens come periodically. But verse 34, look what he says. But David says to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for the father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it and kill it. So now Saul, in the previous verse, tells David what he thinks he is unable to do. Now David tells Saul what he knows he's able to do. See, if you look at it, all David was doing was telling you his track record. 
See, you got to get to a point. He's giving you his testimony. See, you got to understand that when you've been through one thing and you've been through something else, this giant that's in your face right now is nothing that you haven't seen before. See, the problem that we make is that we make the opposition greater each time we face it. And because I didn't face this one this time, now I'm nervous about this one, but I don't care who I face in the battle as long as I got the same God. See, as long as I got the same God, it doesn't make a difference what my opposition is. It can be a lion. It can be a bear. Oh my. It don't really Really make any difference because I got the same God so I don't look at what's in the battle I look at the God that's in the battle with me oh, that's why I got the victory it ain't based on servant Jay's ability it's based on God's ability that sits on Jer servant Jay's ability and give him the ability to do what he's called him to do so David looks at his previous challenges and said they prepared him for the present one. See, some of the stuff y'all been through, it was only preparing you for the next giant. You have been in training for all the things you've been through. See, you wanted to throw the tower in, but God had you in training because your giant is on the way. See, I don't know about you, but I, a lion ain't nothing to, 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 to shake a stick at, and a bear ain't either. Both of them, one of them is the king of the jungle, and a bear, that joke, I seen a bear, the other, I was watching channel. You know, I watched them old natural channels and animal channel. Man, a cat jumped at a bear. Now, I, I'm surprised that the bear got scared, but that joker went up the tree like he was 30 pounds. I ain't never known a bear that could move like that. So you know David had to face some opposition. But what I love about David is David said it's really not an opposition, it's an opportunity. See, when you look at the thing the right way, everything that you face is not an opposition, but it's an opportunity for you to show God in your life. All the things you've been through was just to manifest the God that's on the inside of you. So when people see you come out on the other side, they give God glory and not you. Oh, I'm preaching hard today. So he tells him, he said, he said, he said, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And then this uncircumcised Philistine should be like one of them. He said, he said, I, because of my track record, I'm not looking at the opponent because of my track record with God. All I have to do is put my faith in God and no matter what I face, I'm going to conquer it. So he says, he says, he says, he says, he says that. Now, 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 on top of that, you have the, y'all know my word that I've been on lately. You have the audacity. You have the audacity to come at me and you ain't even circumcised. Which means, how do you even come at me when you're outside the covenant? I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't waste your time with people outside the covenant because they don't even understand the real deal anyway. He said this uncircumcised Philistine has to go down because you're not a part of the covenant. Mm. Should be like one of them since he has defied the armies. Of the living God. David said, verse 37, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Well, since he ain't, since the Lord ain't with him, he might as well push somebody else out there because he's now been rejected. But he saw that when David wouldn't back down, but came back and gave his testimony, he said, you know what? There's something about this boy. It's something special about him. It's something anointing on his life. Get to the point when when people give you one thing, you come back with something else. You come back with the positive. You can't do this. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You can't do this. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. You have to come back and let them know. I don't care what you say, but you can't shake me. Because if people think they can shake you, they will always tell you negativity. That's why you have to be careful. Very careful who you like speaking to your life. This is the season for making the circle smaller. Because I'm realizing that even though we look at the same thing, we see it differently. 
and, and, and because you might not have spent much time in the word of God, and you might not have been dedicating yourself for the service of God. Why I'm going to listen to you when you come to church once every blue moon anyway? Why I'm going to listen to you when you read your word every other month anyway? So what really can you tell me besides your opinion? And everybody has one of those. But in this season, I need somebody who knows the word of God, who is able to speak into my life when I'm in the valley low to let me know that I still have victory no matter what. Because even though it might not look like it now, how many of y'all know the battle is not over? How many of y'all know it's not done yet? God is the one who says when it's done. So even though it might look like I'm not gaining ground, God said all I have to do is step in and when I step in, it's all over. Some of y'all been dealing with some stuff for a while now. And God said, I've allowed it to happen to build your faith up in me. God can take you out of anything whenever he wants to. So now you have to ask the question, if I'm still in this, what am I still needing to learn? Teachers don't let you go to the next grade until you acquire all the information you need in the previous one. Some of y'all are trying to skip a grade, but you're not that smart. So you got to go through the whole. You got to go through the whole class and you need to listen to the teacher because once the teacher tell you what he needs to tell you, now you can go to the next grade. Trying to go to the next grade when you have poor attendance. And so now you sit down to take the test, but you don't have the materials in your mind to pass the test. But then you want to holler out, God, help me with this test. Why are you going to help you with something that you didn't put in you? The Holy Spirit job is to bring back to your remembrance. If you ain't put nothing on the inside, what you remembering? Class in session. So what I love is what I love is what I love, what I love, what I love. And I ain't speaking to nobody individually, so don't go out of here mad. But if the truth hits you. So now we drop down to verse. I don't know if I want to go to my notes now. I might want to just see what thus said the Lord still in this text. So now after he's ready to fight um, David, after he wants to fight Goliath, Saul wants to give him his equipment. I'm trying to get us to understand why would I use your equipment? In this next season, do not try to be like somebody else. But call, God called you to be unique. And you need to do it the way God gave it to you. Because see, there's, things, there's some things that happen. First of all, if he'd have put on Saul garb and worn, then Saul would have got the credit. Because Saul would have said, you worn with my stuff. See, in this next season, God don't want you to win with nobody else's stuff. He only wants you to win with the stuff he gave you. You don't worry about nobody else's thing that they got going on. Just take what God gave you. Just take that little sling and them five stones and, and you do what you need to do with those. David also couldn't take his battle dress because he wasn't battling the same way Saul was. Saul was battling on a physical level where David was battling on a spiritual level. So you can't take natural stuff into the... Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. So he said, you know, no, no, I've tried it on and it, and it don't fit me. See, I, that got to be a, to a point where you, you understand that things that you're doing that somebody else's don't fit you. Many people struggle with leadership and doing other things in the church because they're trying to be somebody else. If you would just be yourself, your original self is way greater than a copy of somebody else. 
That's why you don't have to jockey and fight when God has for you is for you and you ain't got to jockey with nobody else. That's why I love being serving Jay. I don't have to be nobody else. Can't nobody beat me being me. I love being serving Jay. That's why y'all don't get up here to hear me try to sing like Pastor Coleman. That's what he do. But see, if I came in here not knowing who I was, I would have tried to come in riding on the coattail of his because I didn't know who I was. We have a identity crisis in the body of Christ. When you understand who you are and what he created you to be, you don't need to look like nobody else. So, so now he's about to go in verse 48. He's about to go and, 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 and tangle or do the tango with Goliath. It says, when the Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly and uh, toward the battle line to meet. In this next season, do not run from your giants. Do not run away from your giants. Because you already positioned for the victory, so why do you need to run? You run to your giant and defeat your giant. The reason why some of y'all keep struggling with the same stuff over and over because you've allowed fear to set in and you won't face your giant. In this season, face your giant. Head on. Look him dead in the eye. Let him know I'm coming for you. Get your stuff together. Because, see, I already know I win. See, if we truly understand we win, why are we backtracking? Why are we running when we can all just face the giant because we win? Verse 49. David put his hand in his bag. Took out a stone. See, you got to, you got to have some in your bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. In this next season, you got to have some in your bag. I don't want to take nothing out of it. Y'all watch me. I don't want your money. You got to have some in your bag. In this next season, when you face your giant, you better pull some prayer out your bag. In this next season, you better pull some devotional time out your bag. In this next season, you better pull some praise and worship out your bag because it's all in the bag. Everything you need is in the bag. Yeah, help me, Holy Ghost. They looking at me like I'm crazy, Mop. But you better have something in your bag. He took out a stone and slung it. Struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead. And he fell face down on the ground. Now, 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 they have, they have science... And all of this, and they talk about the velocity of it. I'm not finna get into all that. They talk about the velocity, it did the trajectory, and you had to swing it this way. And if he's this tall, he had to go up with it. And if he go up with it, he gonna lose some of the velocity. I, I, I don't, I, 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 I don't have time for all that. But the thing that did strike me was, how can you hit somebody in the forehead, but they fall forward? I, 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 I said, God, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? Uh, he, he, he said that, 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 that there's a word for that. He said it's called prostrate. And anytime you lay flat on the ground, especially in reverence or submission. So when he hit him in the head, he had to fall forward because he submitted to the God of David. See, you got to understand that when you know whose side you on, it has to submit to the God that you serve. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to go home. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. This is verse 50. Striking down the Philistine and killing him. There was no sword in David's hand. So I know David told him that he was going to cut his head off. So, 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 so he, he has no sword in his hand. So we're going to read in the next verse what he had to do. But, but, but in this next season, if you're going to fight your giants, uh, 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 you need to kill them. See, sometimes you knock your giant down, but you keep him on life support. 
See, you need to kill your giant because if you don't, your giant gonna always come back. See, that's why you got to kill him because if it's truly a giant, it's gonna get back up and come back and try you again. But if you kill it, it ain't no way for it to come. See, you got to kill it. You got to kill it. You got to kill it. See, see, if you know that old, old, old smooth talker, it keeps getting in the door. You got to block him out your phone. You, you, you got, you got to, you got to, you got to get off social media. You got to kill it. See, see, you keep him on life support. Every now and then, you would text back and say, "Yeah, I'm okay." See, you don't let the door in again. You don't let the door open. See, you got to kill it. See, you wondering why that giant? You then you talk about how why I can't find a good man because you keep letting that giant keep coming. Yeah, you got to kill it. Yeah, you got to kill it. Don't play with it. You got to kill it. You got to kill it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got, we got to kill it. It's, it's a lot of things we got to kill. And, 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 and your pastor's in that boat too. I'm not preaching just to you all. All of us got some giants we need to kill. Some of us has allowed some, allowed some giants to stay here. And now we've been dealing with that mess for the last 10 to 15 years because when you had the opportunity to kill it, you've left it on life support. Pull the plug. Look what verse 51 says. So then David ran and stood over and grasped his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him. And, 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 and then he cut off his head. See, David knew that, that, that I may face some more challenges, but it won't be this one. See, see, I don't know who I'm talking to in this place today, but you're going to face some more challenges. But when you cut the head off, I bet you it won't be this one, baby. This is the last time I'm going to see this one because this one right here is gone. It ain't no coming back from having your head cut off. Yeah, see, you got to understand David faced more challenges, but you never saw again that he faced Goliath. See, some of y'all, there's now more time to move on to new challenges. Quit fighting that same old challenge you've been fighting for the last 20 years. Cut his head off and be done with that one and on to the next. And what I also loved about this is in this next season, the thing that people used to kill you, you're going to be able to use to get them. See, he didn't have a sword. All he had is, if you go back, he had more than just, just the uh, sling and the stones. He said he had his staff because he was a shepherd boy. See, people leave that out, but that's very important because his rod and his staff shall come. And because he had his staff and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I can now go into the enemy's camp and I can go see Goliath with my staff because it comforts me to know that God is on my side. As long as God is on your side, you should have comfort. As long as God is on your side, nothing should shake you because I'm going into the enemy's camp. Help me, Holy Ghost. In this next season, understand your position for victory in the valley. Play softly for me. Please understand your position in this next season. Because if you understand your position in this next season, you'll get plenty of sleep at night. Some of y'all are staying up late at night because you don't know your position. See, once you know your position, I can go to bed. Help me, Holy Ghost. He just bringing me all kinds. He downloading all kinds of stuff. Y'all remember when the storm happened? And Jesus was on the boat? He positioned himself in the lower part. He positioned himself at the lower part of the boat. Because he understood that the lower part of the boat is waiting. So even though the storm came and all of this, and he said, don't you care that we perish? He had already positioned himself and he knew that everything would be okay. See, when you position yourself, it doesn't make any difference what storm you face. You know that everything's going to be all right. I don't care what you're looking at right now. It's going to be all right. I don't care what they said on your job. It's going to be all right. I don't care what the doctor said. It's going to be all right because you position yourself. Ooh. Position, position, position. 